Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Wife cheated is now begging to come back. This is my first post, but have been lurking since it all went down. So this is all pretty fresh. Wife of five years, being together 13, caught her cheating the first week of May. Found DMs that painted the entire picture. Still burns just thinking about it. She started talking to this guy at the beginning of March, and towards the end of March is when I started to notice the change. Social media selfies were extra, going out to the same club, bar, more and more, and this is where she met this guy. She would go with girlfriends and her mom and sisters, so at first I didn't think too much of it, but once she started coordinating going to this place, which is not like her at all, I knew something was up. I would randomly try to check her phone, but it had a complex password, etc. All the red flags. Anyways, a week before I caught her, I called her out on the rift between us because I'm sure all of you have known how a cheater acts, and she said she thinks we need to separate because we are too different, blah blah blah. So I agree, and tell her if she wants to leave, she needs to leave, and we agree that I will give her time to find a place since I have always been the provider. We do have an 11 year old son, so she has chosen not to work for a long time. Fast forward a week, I find the DMs and confront her through text. All she says is she's coming to get her stuff when I'm at work. So she moves in with her sister. No job, no money. We do agree that no matter what, we should share 50-50 with our son. May 4th was the day I caught her. There was zero contact with her the first two weeks. Her own sister and mom were disgusted with her and trying to be a shoulder to lean on through the hell I was going through. I couldn't sleep, eat, or run my own company, so trying to hold it together has taken every ounce of me to keep this moving. Knowing that she threw away everything for a guy at the club makes me sick what she is putting our son through for her own selfish desires. I have not been a perfect husband by all means, but I have been a faithful provider for our family the entire time. And so to rub salt in the wound, she starts going on social media posting lies that we have been separated for a long time and we are going through a divorce and that she met someone else. But everyone close to me knows the truth. I did start the divorce process through mediation because at least until now, we agree on almost everything, but I'm sure that will change. After a month of hell and no contact, me just avoiding knowing anything about her and her new life, I started to pick myself back up and kind of look forward to the future, at least for a few moments at a time. Then a week ago, she sends a half ass apology text, first time admitting she was wrong. I ignored it and planned on not responding to anything that didn't have to do with our son or divorce. A few more the next day saying she wanted to talk and how sorry she was. Then the following day, about a hundred voice texts and texts begging me to forgive her and take her back and how she was blinded and will do anything to make it right. Turns out, she got a DUI a few nights before, and I guess without me to hold her hand, her world is crumbling around her now all of a sudden. I always believed in karma and that it would catch up to her, but I seriously didn't expect it to happen this fast. And for a brief moment, I felt a small victory for once after the month I just went through. But that faded fast, and for the past week and small progress I made has started all over again. I'm staying strong, but there is that little devil in the back of my mind tempting me to see if she is willing to change. But trust me, I know it's just a desperation attempt by her. This is ongoing now. She keeps saying that she will show me that she can be a better person, but I was better off when she was just living her new best life. Sorry for the book and a terribly written one at that. There are so many more details that make it even more effed up, but this is the summary. But thanks for anyone that reads. This sub has been a place where I don't feel alone. Just reread what I posted and wanted to add a few more details. When I found the DMs, she had been sleeping with this guy for at least three weeks before she asked for the separation, saying she was going to the store or to her sister's house when she was going to see him. I would take my son to practice and go to the gym, kind of my routine after work. She would use that time to sneak around. And that's only what I know because Snapchat and Instagram was how they communicated, so God only knows how many other times she lied with Snapchat messages that delete. And also, when she first talked about separation or divorce, she said she didn't want anything, house, etc., just 50-50 with our son. But the day before I found the DMs, I reiterated the fact that we cannot live together and be separated through text. She blew up and told me that this was her home and would not leave. And legally, if anyone needed to leave, it was me. Huh, <laughs> guess she read something on Instagram. Thank God I found her old phone the next day and was able to log into her social media because she uses the same password for everything. I could not imagine what kind of hell she would have put me through without me having concrete evidence. Let's check in with the community for some comments. Mysterious Teaching 30 says, Keep your head up, keep moving forward. 
She has made her choices, willingly and deliberately, to be in the position she is now in. If you haven't done it already, lawyer up and get this show on the road. Get the evidence you need to prove infidelity. If you're in a no-fault state, you're probably going to be taken to the cleaners money-wise. If you have a joint bank account, take out half so she can't empty it all in a night. Get a counselor for you and your child. You're going to have to make time to get your head right. And you're going to have to protect your child as much as you can from using poor emotional outlets in this extremely stressful time. It will get better. Don't let her bring you back down to her level. If she wants to go out and break her vows by banging strangers from the club, that's on her. If she wants to break the law by getting drunk and driving, that's again, her poor choice. If she had a problem with how the marriage was going, there were dozens of acceptable ways to go about expressing those. Infidelity isn't one of them. Good luck. Most of us have been there, and all of us will listen. The OP responds with, Thanks for the words of advice. And yes, I live in a no-fault state. Shake my head. She says she doesn't want anything, the house, the business, etc. But I already know that will change and have a lawyer on standby for when that happens. Mysterious Teaching 30 responds again. Get a separation agreement written out, signed, and notarized while she is in an amicable mood. Things will most likely change once she realizes you are gone for good. You should already be getting all the paperwork done and getting ahead of the curve. I know it's tough, but you have to protect yourself from her. You have to think of her as an adversary now. She will be out to get your assets and your mental well-being. Who's Got Ammo has the next comment. OP, you really need to act fast on covering your ass here. Once she can no longer stay in denial about any chance she has of you two getting back together so that she can keep her meal ticket in her life, she is going to turn vengeful very quickly. It seems as though her friends and family fostered the attitude your wife had that enabled her to go out and cheat by partying and clubbing with her like she was a single woman. Don't be surprised if one of those same people get in her head about how she was your support system all this time and gave you the son you wanted and yada yada and how she deserves her half, etc. I recommend that you get a lawyer to draft up an agreement for her to sign and get it notarized or whatever you have to in order to make it binding. Be prepared to keep it in contact with her to string her along until this is done. Possibly be prepared to tell her something to the effect of, I will consider giving us a second chance, but only with a clean slate because our old relationship died when she cheated. And if she's serious about returning home, she'll make D as quick and painless for you all as possible. She deserves nothing for throwing you and everything away. If she goes all scorched earth here, then I imagine the pain you feel staying in contact and trying to remain amicable will pale in comparison to her going all fire and brimstone. Mysterious Teachings 30 has another comment. Exactly. Get the paperwork signed. Get all the evidence you can. Get the child abandonment written down, the clubbing, the wild and reckless behavior, anything you can use to keep the judge fair to you. She will lie to judges and lawyers and put on the waterworks anytime she can, and when that happens, you need to have physical evidence. And even that didn't work for a couple of my friends. The court system is completely biased in a woman's favor. Our next comment comes from Empty Phylactery. You're getting some gold advice here, OP. For your and the kid's sake, use it. Once the trust is gone, no holds barred. The OP responds, Very good advice, thank you. I agree I should take advantage of this remorse to get things in writing. Just knowing her, she will change once she knows I'm not wavering. We are in a no-fault state, but do you think if we have things in writing saying I keep all the assets in the house, the court will sign off on it? I know I will have to pay child support and possibly spousal support, which I guess is way more than she deserves. A few lawyers have said I may have to buy her out of the house even if she says she doesn't want any parts of it. At least not yet. Who's Got Ammo has our last comment. It's hard to say what any judge will do. It's been my experience that courts are biased towards women and mothers, so you are already slightly disadvantaged out of the gate. She can actually lobby on your behalf though that she doesn't want these things, which may or may not be accepted by the judge. I'm not going to pretend that this is going to be easy, but I would take inspiration from your soon-to-be ex-wife, the way she so easily lied and cheated on you, and I would lie to her. I would reopen our lines of communication and tell her that, while I could never forget what she did, that I think I can forgive her and want to try to move past this together, yada yada. I would play her like a cheap fiddle to keep her agreeable to all of my terms. Consult your lawyer on the likelihood of you getting a sweetheart deal from the courts if she is also pushing for that. If it seems likely, then I would lay it on her. Maybe a family dinner once in a blue moon, but I'm sorry, it's still too hard because I can't get the mental images out of my head. It was nice to see you again, but it's still hard. 
I need you to leave again, but I can tell I'm making progress, and I will try to schedule something for us to do together soon. However you can, keep stringing her along with hopes of reconciliation to keep her willing to let you have whatever you want. It's what she deserves. Mm -hmm.